So how do you get your new Akita puppy to walk beautifully on a loose lead nicely next to you to heal? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Akita Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to teaching you everything you could dream of knowing about the Akita and then how to become a high-level canine leader that can raise perfect Akita companions. So if you're a lifelong lover of Akitas or just thinking about getting your very first one, then I promise you this channel is for you. So don't forget to subscribe. Now, with all that over and done with, let's move into this week's q and and I was going through my emails this morning and I got a Q&A from a very nice viewer of my other main channel, the Fenrir Canine Show, saying that they've just got an Akita and they would love to be able to, to walk nicely because the last dog they had pulled on a lead and they don't want to make that mistake again. So they want to start from day one with making sure that they've got a dog that will walk lovely to heal uh, and have got any tips for that. So I was like, awesome. That's an amazing video to do. Definitely we will. So before we dive into it, I think it's important that I say that Training your dog is obviously there's so many pieces to the puzzle. Heel walking being one of them and heel walking is one of what I call my five mandatory basic obedience that we must master. Now I've got my perfect puppy course, the link's down in the description box below. That covers all of those areas of basic obedience, including heel in much more detail than I'd be able to do in just a, a quick YouTube video. But it also covers how to socialize your puppy perfectly and then also how important manners are and how we go about having perfect manners. But in this video, we're gonna really focus on heel walking and the approach is pretty much identical for any breed. There's not many that I would make an adjustment for with the exception of maybe two or three but an Akita definitely fits in to my standard approach to teaching a dog to walk to heal now the way I do this is a very simple like I said there's video lectures and goes into a lot of detail on that course but I'll give you a quick overview and it's all about setting our dog up for success from day one I absolutely with a burning passion hate extendable leads I think it teaches a dog to disrespect what should be a beautiful tool between you and the dog which is a lead and that whenever a lead is on, I, what that means is I want you on my left hand side walking with this lead loose. It should never be taught unless I'm communicating something to you through some basic lead pressure. But ideally, in all circumstances, if this lead is on, you are on my left hand side with the lead loose going wherever I go because I am your calm, consistent leader. So I always recommend to people to never use an extendable lead because it breaks that down really quickly, to never, wherever possible, not use a lead for exercising your puppy because, again, that can break down that communication of what that tool means. Now, obviously, we never want to put our dog in a situation, especially a young puppy, where there could be a dangerous situation. So in that case, if you do take them somewhere where it's not completely secure and you need control, that's where a long line lead can be very useful. Let it drag on the floor. And if there's ever a situation where you need to regain control quickly, you can pick up the long line and reel the puppy in. But what that does is do is it stops that kind of breakdown in communication that this lead is a tool and that tool means that you are gonna be here on my left-hand side. So the way we do that is we start off by using no lead whatsoever. And we use a lure-based approach of luring the dog with a food reward into the desired position. When they're in that desired position, we mark it using our verbal marker of the term heel. And then we get access to the food. So they very quickly learn that this term, heel, means I want you on my left-hand side. And if you're there, good things are going to happen. We do that very basic, no distraction on the spot. We then add in turns. We might go 90 degrees, lure them. Might go 180 degrees, 360, 270, go clockwise, anti-clockwise, constantly luring the puppy with a food reward. When they get into the desired position, we let them know heal. Heal means this position here, and you get access to the food reward. And we make it a game. We make it a really fun experience. We then start to layer up, adding steps in. So we're going to go a couple of steps forward, 180 degree turn, one step forward, 90 degree turn, five steps forward, always luring the dog and always marking the when they're in the ideal position, we're marking that behavior with heal, and then they get an access to the food reward. Now, very quickly, that puppy will learn that that term means I want you here 
on my left hand side. Then all we need to do is add the lead to that equation and then they will associate the lead with the same thing. And because we haven't abused that lead and caused confusion that that lead can mean that you can run off in any direction that you want, that you can pull on the end of the lead. We've not done any of that. We can quickly layer up the lead so that that means when this lead is on, I'm going to be utilizing this heel command we've just learned, and we're going to be able to move with you on my left hand side. We can then start to layer up the distractions, layer up the amount of steps we're taking, layer up the amount of turns that we do, slowly start to remove the rewards. So we're not removing them every, rewarding them every few steps. It can be every 10 steps, then 20, and then three times a walk, twice a walk, once a walk to a point where it's not at all. But the overarching theory is that we build up slowly and gradually and surely. We start as we mean to go on, we introduce the lead and we enforce and insist on success from day one. And again, that's why there's no quick fix. There's no easy solution to anything in the world, let alone dog training or canine behavior or having a perfect canine companion. It requires commitment and dedication to the task for the rest of the dog's life. But if you're prepared to do that for your new Akita, you will have a wonderful example of the breed and you will be blessed with what will be an incredible canine companion. Now, like I say, the Perfect Puppy course is there if you want more details and a much more visual step-by-step -step process of that, as well as a step-by-step -step process for everything else that you need to have a perfect canine companion. But if you've got any questions about your Akita or upcoming Akita whatsoever, drop them down in the comment section below. We're going to be doing two videos here on the Fenrir Akita show every single week specific to helping you on your journey with this incredible breed. So I cannot wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Akita show.